Hey everyone, welcome to the 14 Wins Podcast, where we talk about UFOs and all of its related high strangeness. I'm Bones, and with us is Rom X. Hey everybody. Hey Rom. So, this is going to be a good episode. We're going to discuss the Nazca Mummies down in Peru, uh, the alien attacks in the same region, and the the clowns in the UFO Congress. <laughs> <laughs> How about those clowns in Congress? How about those clowns? <laughs> yeah, let's start with those mummies because, gosh, we've just been dying to talk about this so so long, and we didn't know, right? How yeah. many episodes is we've been talking? I don't even know. Anyway, we didn't know. Well, it's been a roller coaster around. ride, you know, because when I first saw it, when when they were doing that presentation in the Mexican Congress, you know, I was I was thrilled. I was looking at it like this is amazing to have these things in these glass cases. You know, and then the speculation came, you know, the naysayers came, and now it seems like it's getting back to being true. Oh, yeah. So, we, and, and then we mentioned previously, I think the way we left it last was that the DNA was unlikely to be conclusive because the half-life of human DNA is around 500 years. Right. And the bodies were around 1,000 years old. Right. So... We thought, oh, okay, it's going to be a while before we know anything. Uh, it was very fast. It ended up being within a week that the University of Ica in Peru studied those bodies and had a panel of people study them from all sorts of different fields. And they said they are authentic and they are not human. And they started publishing a lot of information about them. So then we go, okay, how do we know if we can't rely on the DNA? How about the fact that they lay eggs? Yeah. They're humanoids. That's that something, eggs. isn't it? <laughs> it is something. So at this point, everyone who's examined those bodies, all the scientists and doctors, have said they're authentic. No one has claimed that they're a hoax. That's the only way I see this being anything other than a non-human species. Yeah. And they're humanoid. They have... But they have three fingers and three toes. Right. And what, three foot tall? Yeah, I think they're around three, three and a half feet tall. But they're not the only skeleton that that's like this. There's another skeleton called Maria that no one's really been known what to do with. You know, that's uh, from a, a, a long time ago. And it's much bigger. I think it's six or seven feet tall. And then... There are other skeletons that are smaller even than this one. The one Gary Nolan, the Atacama skeleton that, that Gary Nolan examined was really small. And we mentioned that one ultimately when he examined the genome, he said this is a human with a birth defect. And, 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 All right. I, I'm being very glib when I say that. I think that's important. That Oh, it's a human with a birth defect. It's a human with a series of impossible birth defects defects right it was like this particular small human won the impossible genetic lotto 10 times right so the body is anomalous and i think it's important it also had the same elongated skeleton as these other bodies and i doubt that they'll match yeah i'm, I, I'm not suggesting that i'm just saying that we're here we are seeing anomalous bodies with the same elongated skeletons right and especially these are not hu human and they show up in the Peruvian Aboriginal art. <clears throat> right. They showed up in the textiles and other art. And they show up in other cultures. There's been already people going around and going, hey, look, there's these three fingers yeah. and toe guys. That are showing it up shows up everywhere. <laughs> Even shows up. There's a, you know, there's the, uh, a park in uh, Utah called the Three Finger Canyon. And, oh, yeah. they, and they have petroglyphs with, with figures with three fingers. These guys are showing up all over ancient culture. So does that mean that ancient aliens theories are in some way somehow true uh, maybe and the fact that all of this is happening in peru i find very interesting right because peru is the home of the nazca lines which can only be seen from space right and we've mentioned all sorts of other phenomenon related very strange and anomalous things that are happening down in peru um yeah and they're also i mean it's also very uh, well known that there's a elaborate tunnel system you know, under underneath uh, um, in in that same region, but also specifically in uh, Cusco, a tunnel, elaborate tunnel system that's basically been kind of closed up for many many years. Uh, they were just seen as not uh, 
made for humans and dangerous to go down. Yeah, I think you mentioned they sealed those tunnels up. Yep, it just seems like there's a lot, uh, a lot of research that can be done. It sounds like it's it's moving. Yeah, so these these beings, their their physiology is totally different. Like th- they lay eggs, so there's no mammals that right. lay eggs. They're not right. mammals, so that that makes them something completely different. And to me, given the variety of different sizes and like like I said, the, the impossible genetic nature of some of the other uh, bodies that were studied. These look like they're genetically engineered. Right. They appear to be something that you can make in different sizes hmm. and different shapes. So who was controlling them? Were they sentient? Is or Am I wrong? Were these individual sentient beings? I don't know. But they look like they were engineered to me. And that would match some of what we've seen from the material analysis from the craft. So Gary Nolan released recently um, some data plots of a sample from what is believed to be a UFO craft. And the material analysis showed that there was mixing of elements and elements in impossible purity in a way that would make us believe that something is engineering this on an atomic level. Okay. So you're talking about a craft that's related to the Nazca mummies? No, I'm talking about a UFO craft. Oh, I don't okay. Know, uh, I, well, actually, I do know where that piece is from. It's from near the Socorro crash in New Mexico. And uh, that piece is authentic. And it shows a engineering of a metal that we just don't know how to do. We, we don't know how to engineer things on the atomic level. Okay. So that looks like something is putting this stuff together. Not as much like maybe it comes from another planet, but that there, that does not mean that this isn't extraterrestrial. I, it just means that what this looks like is some something is putting this stuff together from elements on our planet. Hmm. Although some of the analysis of the bodies of the Peruvian mummies came back and made, there was indications that maybe made it look like it was extraterrestrial. There was the presence of a very rare metal named osmium, which is found in the Earth's crust, and it was grafted onto the skeletons of these beings. Yeah, strange. So, because this metal is so rare, and it would definitely have been very hard to mine today, extremely hard to mine a thousand years ago. Right. So, And then to graft it on to the, someone's skeleton without killing them, I, we, we don't have that sort of technology. Right. Um, so somebody had it a thousand years ago and the presence of that metal as in, in the amounts that they found, as well as some other things about these bodies, for example, that make them seem like they're not adapted to our gravity Mm. that make them seem like maybe they are coming from another place in the, in the universe. Right. So, you know, related, I can't remember where I saw this, but there was someone interviewing some Aborigines from the Peruvian lowlands from the more tropical area uh, that were talking about ant men mm. or ant people, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. very interesting. Yeah, I mean, when you when you hear someone <laughs> Aborigines talk about that, um, mm-hmm. and then you, you talk about these tunnels, and then you see that these you got these three foot tall mummies that are very thin, it, you start to think, I, I don't know. So that was a shaman. Uh, and uh, that appeared okay. from a, a native tribe in Peru yeah. on a podcast in Peru or a, a news show in Peru. Oh, okay, okay. And he was shown a clip of those uh, beings that are attacking the Iquitu village in Peru. And there, there's one where you can pretty clearly see the, the being. And I would like to point out that that being looks about seven feet tall, and it looks like one of our little skeletons but seven feet tall. Yeah. Again, meaning maybe we're looking at something that comes in different sizes. Right. For, well, first they ask him, are you familiar with extraterrestrials? Do you believe in extraterrestrials? And he, he's not really familiar with the idea and he doesn't know what they're talking about. Right. So then they show him the video and he sees the being and he recognizes it instantly. And he says, oh, that's the, and he gives the, the their aboriginal name for it. And he says, um, 
they they live underground. Right. And then he starts telling them all about it. He's like, they're very dangerous. Yeah. And they have powers, and they're not like us. And they they know of these beings down there. Yeah, very interesting. So speaking of those alien attacks and what's going on in Peru, I mean, that deserves an update. We've been talking about that. And it, it, it ties right into this because Peru, again, it's just the fact that it's Peru. And we're seeing so much activity coming from that area. And interestingly, that news is not reaching the U.S. Yeah. It's all over the Peruvian news. It's all over the Brazilian news. Yeah, it was watched- a, it's a huge story. Yeah. It's a big story in Korea. I was watching a doctor from Korea do a breakdown of the mummies. Oh, really? And yet in the U.S., I mean, if you're going to see it, you, you end up seeing it on the back page of the Rolling Stone as a joke or something. you know? Right, right. These attacks have been happening since June. And I want to go back to that for a second, because I think that that's really important. In June, around the same time, the Peruvian Congress approved the U.S. sending a force down there. And the U.S. sent a force called Operation Resolute Sentinel 23. And they sent down a bunch of special ops soldiers and Air Force personnel. And this was in the news. This was approved by the Peruvian Congress to aid with some of the uprisings and trouble that they were having in Peru. Right. So this force goes down there. And it, honestly, it's probably to protect U.S. mining interests down there. Right. And this force goes down there and they're doing whatever they're doing. And the special ops side. And then all of a the sudden, these things start happening. This frequency starts intensifying. These attacks start happening all around the same time. And that force is supposed to leave there in December. Or at least that's when the timing was allotted by the Peruvian Congress. But I would postulate that that force stimulated the phenomenon. Yeah, right. Could have. And that this is an extension of what we saw when, like, the Tic Tac incident. So you show up with some of our best fighter planes, and it shows up with something that much better. Right. And then it has to show off, right? It has to do (laughs) anything you can do, I could do better. (laughs) And in this case, you know, we sent, U.S. sent a bunch of special ops guys down there. And then this girl gets attacked by something that looks like alien special ops guys, right? Right. And these alien special ops soldiers had elongated helmets and body armor and then they were flying around on platforms and to me it looks like this is the phenomenon doing uh trying to do a one-up ism again and then it starts being cruel and it attempted to mutilate a girl down there right and the girl was interviewed a couple of researchers went down there named timothy alvarino and doug thornton and they talked to people they talked to the girl who was attacked And it's a pretty powerful piece of video that they put together, and I'll link to it in the description. They did a good job of interviewing people and just finding out what they heard, getting witness reports. And so this young girl who was attacked, she heard the being speaking in Spanish. Okay. But she couldn't see their, their faces. And she said that their helmets were elongated, and I would point out that in 90% of alien or whatever encounters, the communication all happens telepathically. I don't know if she was hearing anything vocally speaking or if it was in her brain, but yeah. she could hear these beings talking. And then they were flying around on these super advanced platforms that we just don't have. And then they bungled the mutilation attempt of her. They tried it a couple of times. They left two marks on her. They attempted to put her on the platform, and they couldn't. And then (laughs) the villagers came down, and they ran away. Strange. Yeah. So if they were really serious and really that powerful, they had no real reason to run away. This, again, seems like a demonstration of some sort. And unfortunately, it was a demonstration that traumatized this young girl. Yeah. But I think that that's some sort of communication. They're talking to somebody by Mm -hmm. doing that. Mm -hmm. And the military is down there. And then we had Kirkpatrick say in a previous government hearing, oh, yeah, this activity is concentrated around both coasts of the U.S., the South China Sea, and the Middle East, which is where all of our military is concentrated. Right, right. I see a connection here. 
between that. And I, we didn't understand that. We were like, why is there such frequency? We talked about this on a few different episodes. And I right. said, why is there such frequency? Why is the intensity? And I mean, man, I've looked at all sorts of date time correlations, <laughs> astronomical correlations. Yeah. And then it smacked me over the head like a ton of bricks. Like when I, I realized, oh, it's the military. Yeah. Like the military is stimulating this. I mean, we got like 80 years uh, worth of accounts of, of them showing up where there's uh, military activity. I mean, it's, yeah. yeah. We've talked a lot about the U- Ukraine and how there's a bunch of activity happening there. I've seen videos from Israel, Gaza. So there's activity happening there. I don't know that anyone can determine the frequency with everything going on over there. But right. the frequency over the Ukraine was intensified. Right. So w- one thing I would point out about those Peru attacks is one thing that Tim and Doug were able to confirm when they went down there was that there's a video floating around of a adolescent teen male getting fished out of a river in Peru with his face peeled off. Whoa. Yeah. And we didn't know whether that was authentic or not. So they went down there and said, according to the people down there, that video was authentic. Yeah. That didn't hear. So here's one more case that we can chalk up to human mutilation and the phenomenon. And we mentioned that these are extremely rare uh, from what we can tell, but they do happen. Yeah. So when you think of a danger like that and you think of a threat like that and you, you go, wow, this phenomenon is pretty serious. You go, why is my government not telling me about it? Which leads us to the U.S. government and all of the shenanigans that are going on there right now. Oh boy! So yeah, let's 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 get into it. Uh, fill me in because I've kind of purposely been turning a blind eye to it all because it's just uh, you know it's just so frustrating. And it's, it's a lot of a lot of, lot of its noise. You just kind of wait for it to settle and see what it happens. is. All noise until the data comes out, right? Yeah. The only reason I pay close attention is because sometimes the data slips out in the process or at least gives it some good leads to run down. You know? Right. Yeah. The, the, the big push right now and the most important thing to for us to get real data is the Schumer Rounds Amendment. And this is part of the National Defense Authorization Act. And this would mandate some of these contractors. And now we know where these offices are. They're, they are in the CIA, um, so we we mentioned that previously. Right. My analysis. I was just, you know, saying this is this is where I think it is, um, and sure enough, that's where it was the Office of Global Access in the CIA, which makes perfect sense because that's where you can hide stuff. Right. You can hide things in the CIA that you couldn't hide in the Department of Defense because you need congressional authorization for the money, okay? and we don't even know how big it is. Because the program, they've already said, is self-funding. Right. Yep. And then there's the double dealing going on. My understanding is Lockheed Martin has, isn't even denying that they have this UAP material anymore. Really? And that will come up. So the Schumer Rounds Amendment is going through Congress. President Trump helped pave the way for this. President Biden helped pave the way for this. And pretty much most of Congress is on board, like 90, 95% of Congress is on board with getting this Schumer rounds amendment through and just getting UAP transparency on the table, which is great. But then there's these few guys that popped up in this last week. And that is Mike Johnson, Mike Rogers, Mitch McConnell, and Mike Turner. And Mike Turner keeps his name. He's like a bad penny in this. He just keeps popping up. And he, he no matter what he is saying right now, because I've heard him denying this recently, he, he did step out of the way after all of this. You, you, you missed the kerfuffle. But, right. in, <laughs> but during the kerfuffle, Mike Turner, Mike Rogers, Mitch McConnell, and Mike Johnson made a play to take the, the steam out of the Schumer Rounds Amendment, which is a bipartisan bill. Right. But there's always that one person who's throwing wrenches, you know. 
Yeah, in this case, it was at least four, probably five. Wrenches? Well, persons. Oh, okay. And if they all brought two wrenches, then that would be ten wrenches. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's a lot of wrenches. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they tried. Um, they basically tried. And, and the public caught wind of it. I think one of the exciting things was that the UFO community really is starting to generate a little bit of power. Okay, yeah. And the UFO community, especially in on the right, uh, you know, there's there's a, this is a popular issue on the right. This is a popular issue uh, among Republicans. Hmm. So they're going to have to deal with that. And I think we said we would see UFOs on the ballot in 2020. That's right. And here we are. And what a time. I mean, this is crazy. When you when you look at the timeline, and you go, okay. I mean, even just a year ago, like you think about. Ronald Motry and those the very first UAP hearing. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, there's a UAP hearing. Right. And they said, well, maybe occasionally do we see something that you can't really understand, but we need better data collection. That's right. how it always comes back. We need better data collection. Right, right. You know, we need better pictures. No, you right. don't. You have a craft. You have right. bodies. You don't right. really need anything. And that's why people had such a reaction when NASA announced their UAP study. It's like, shut up. Right, right. Shut up and don't waste the money because you're all going to sit there and eat lunch on a government dime. Right. And you're just wasting time and money because you have craft and you have bodies. So just let, let's just get this on the table and move forward. And they did that to themselves. All of us should be looking at NASA and being like, tell us, NASA, you're wonderful. And no one is doing that. Everyone's mm -hmm. looking at them as just the science wing of the military. They did that to themselves. Right. It's a dang shame. Yeah, the Schumer Rounds Amendment, it, it it makes it through this attack. And then afterwards, Mike Turner, Mike Rogers, oh, we're not against UAP di disclosure. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, no matter what they say, their behavior dictates otherwise. Right. And this is what we said. When you're looking at intelligence or news, anything, like you have to just separate pe what people say from what they do. Yep. And these guys are no friends to disclosure. So keep your eyes on them. And if disclosure really matters to you, vote for someone else. Mm -hmm. So they were doing that and they failed. And then on the same day, this huge article comes out in the Daily Mail on UAP. It's written by Josh Boswell, Chris Sharp and Matt Ford. And they come out and they say that the CIA has had a secret retrieval program and this is all held in the Office of Global Access, which, by the way, was on the CIA's org chart up until a month ago. Okay. So it looks like they got ahead of this story and just removed it from the org chart. <laughs> oh, it never existed. Okay, cool. <laughs> it, that'll work with the American oh, yeah. news media. But right. I think the public's caught on. Right. Um, so, you know, they said at least nine craft have been recovered wow. by the u.s government and they sort of ins I'll, let, let, I'll link to the article and let everyone make up their own mind but they kind of insinuate in this article that this office of global access is really good at getting anywhere they want in the world even behind enemy lines and that to me insinuates that they've reverse engineered at least some of the technology and they're using it to go hmm. around and pick up ufo more ufo related material and that could be the camouflage, it could be the propulsion, could be some combination, but, you know, yeah. good for them. I think the rest of us would like to know about all of it. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I appreciate the fact that it's good for defense, but yeah. you're holding back science at this point. You're holding back progress. I mean, we have to find some sort of balance here. So, I mean, you're talking about, you're talking about kind of like an underground arms race now? I mean, because obviously... Other, you know, Russia and China, I shouldn't say obviously, but uh, they could as well have material. Yeah, they do. So we know Russia and China have similar programs. Um, and they've mentioned as much. Oh, okay, okay. So, And I think the U.S. is very aware of that, obviously. And they're also got to be thinking, whoever announces that they've mastered this technology the most first wins power in the world right be like saying i hey we've 
mastered the next step beyond nuclear. You know, you just made yourself infinitely more dangerous. But there's a conversation that's happening between these superpowers involving this stuff that none of us are privy to. Hmm. Is this part of the impulse to get space going? Is this, you know, these are questions everyone asks. And I'm sure that they're involved, but we just don't know how much because they won't share any information. Right. I kind of, I care because I'm a taxpayer and I do care what you're doing with my money. Um, and I think no matter what, the the giant hole in congressional oversight here just has to be addressed. You can't be serious about your job as a congressperson and not care that they're just doing whatever the heck they want without oversight. Right. And part of the contention about this Schumer Rounds bill lately has been the subject of eminent domain. So they are arguing over whether or not these third party contractors like a Lockheed has mm -hmm. rights to the material and the patent rights behind this AI right. stuff. So if they try to say that they have the patent rights to something that they've been telling us doesn't exist, right? I think everyone's going to have a big problem with that. <laughs> right. Good luck trying to enforce that, Lockheed. Good luck. I think a judge is going to see right through that one. Right. That'll be un an unprecedented case. So uh, I, I have a feeling that no one's going to care about your patent, but good luck. <laughs> I don't mean that. Bad luck. I, I don't wish you luck. <laughs> yeah. Don't wish any luck on the you know underground movement for uh, global domination. Yeah, for real. Yeah. You're going to lie to us and tell us this stuff doesn't exist. Study it in the background and then say, hey, guess what? Guess who owns it? Yeah, right. right. It all exists. And guess who owns it? <laughs> Me. Yeah. No, absolutely not. So I, I but apparently these senators are willing to play ball to some extent to keep this moving. But like I said, we'll deal with it in the court. Go right. ahead. Let, let's let's keep it all moving. If eminent domain is the hang up, you know, find some compromise for now. We'll deal with it in the court. Yeah. Inevitably, we're going to sit here and wait for the BS to uh, declare, and we'll see what really comes of all these hearings. But uh, we have to get into cryptids. I've been waiting for a cryptid, cryptid episode. So next episode, cryptids. Let's do it. All right. We're going to wait for this government stuff to develop. We'll talk about it again. But uh, cryptid time. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> all right. I mean, I think we just got it out. Like the Schumer Rounds Amendment is 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 the big thing. Let's this this Daily Mail article was pretty huge. Yeah. You know, keep your eyes on Nazca mummies. Keep your eyes on what's going on with the Peru alien attacks. And let's get back to UFO research, which really does involve cryptids. That's that? right. All right. Well, that wraps it up. I uh, just want to mention uh, one thing on our 14wins.com website we now have a way that you guys can support our podcast you know just for uh, hosting costs and whatnot and we also have a shop you can buy that uh, uh, Kentucky Goblin onesie you've always wanted <laughs> which I love <laughs> yeah. so check it out if you get the, if you get the chance and uh, thanks for listening everyone yeah thanks everybody 